In this next video lesson, we shall be installing Windows 7. However, the installation procedure is almost the same as it would be if you were to install the OS on a computer without one. Before we continue, we should be aware of some of the terminology. The host, which is the computer that VirtualBox is installed on, and guest, which is the operating system that is installed within the VirtualBox. This is important since at some point you may be asked if you want to use a host device. So we should be clear what this means. We can use either a host DVD ROM drive or an ISO image. ISO is a file extension given to a CD or DVD image. So if your intentions are to install several versions of the same operating system, then an ISO file would have the advantage as it makes the installation much quicker. To start the first operating system, we click on New. Here we have the opportunity to name the operating system. This makes sense to name it the same as the operating system that you are installing. Just one point here, you cannot duplicate the name. So in our example, we shall use the name Windows 7 Guest 01. Naturally, if we install a further copy, then this would be Guest 02. You may have noticed that when we type this in, VirtualBox made the assumption that the type is Microsoft Windows. But if we click on the selector to the right of this, we can see we have an option to change this. This also applies to the version. In fact, we can see that VirtualBox supports all the operating systems from Windows 3.1, which, by the way, is over 20 years old now. Next, we are given the option to change the memory settings because here that 512 megabytes is recommended. But this can be changed by using the slider or types in. The maximum is the total memory of the host computer. In this case, it is 2 gigabytes. Of course, the more memory that you allocate to a virtual machine, the quicker it will be. But we must also take in consideration that the more memory we use for the guest, the slower the host will be. Here we have the opportunity to opt out of creating a virtual hard drive. We may, for instance, want a RAID system. This would mean adding more than one hard drive. Creating a virtual hard drive is, in fact, a form of a file, hence the reason why a name of an operating system cannot be the same. A RAID system, by the way, is an efficient way of backing up data and is something that we need to be looking at later. Or we could just copy an existing virtual hard drive. The reason for this is you may want to set up a number of virtual computers all with the similar settings. Here we have chosen Create. VirtualBox is not the only software that is capable of running several operating systems at the same time. Microsoft also produces similar products called VMware. Here we can make the VirtualBox software compatible with these other products. Microsoft also produces similar products called VMware. Here we can make the VirtualBox software compatible with these other products. We shall leave this since we have no intentions of using any other virtual operating software at this time. Here we have the option to have a dynamic or static hard drive to conserve the hard drive space, we shall select Dynamic, as this has the flexibility of increasing the hard drive space as we install different applications. If speed was a main factor, a fixed size would be more beneficial. Once again, we have the option to increase or decrease the size of the drive space. The recommended minimum space is 25 gigabytes. Also at this point, we can choose or alter the name of the virtual machine. Also notice that we can change the location of the virtual machines. Here we can see it's been installed in VirtualBox VMs. It could be useful to have them installed on a completely different drive or location. Basically, that is it. The very first virtual machine has now been set up. We can see the description of this machine if we scroll down. It is also possible to alter other features by clicking on Settings. Here we have different categories from General to Shared Folders. We shall discover some of these features 
as we progress. The first of these is System. Here we can see the boot option. The default setting is floppy, followed by CD, DVD, ROM drive, then hard drive. Since we wish to boot from the CD, DVD, then this will need changing. To do this, we highlight the CD, DVD, ROM, then click on the up arrow found at the side. We can now see that the first option is CD, DVD drive. Just one point here, this refers to the guest CD, DVD, ROM drive, and not the host. We shall shortly have an option to change this. Here we have inserted a trial copy of Windows 7. The host is now prompting us on what action we want to take. So we can just cancel this. By double clicking on the guest, the virtual machine will start and we shall have the option to choose the host drive D. We can also see here that we can change this if we desire and use an ISO file instead. Here the installation will begin. Just a couple of points before continuing. The first is to do with the mouse pointer. If we click within this window, which is the virtual machine, the mouse pointer will move within the virtual machine. Once the mouse leaves the virtual machine, the guest mouse will not move. Here you will also find a number of icons at the bottom of this window. You can get a description of these if you hover the mouse over them. To continue, we'll select the time and currency format as we would normally do when we install the operating system. You will find, just as you do when installing an operating system on a computer, the virtual machine will shut down and restart. This will cause the window that the operating system is in resize several times. The next part is installing driver updates. We can do this by clicking on devices, then on install guest editions. This not only updates the drivers, but also installs different utilities. If we now access the computer, you will find the guest is now using its own CD DVD ROM drive. By double clicking on this, we can see a list of different files and folders. The one that we are interested in is VBOX Windows Editions 86. Remember that these additional files will be installed within the virtual box. Just follow the on-screen prompts. Click on Install to any messages that appear. Once a restart has been done, we can check the device manager. And as we can see, we have no conflictions. The virtual machine will behave almost identical to a standalone computer running Windows 7. Next, we shall have a look at some of the options when using a virtual box.